Alien Romulus. It's the seventh film in the Alien franchise, not directed by Ridley Scott, but instead by Fede Alvarez, who has done notable films Don't Breathe and The Evil Dead. Ridley Scott did join the production, but this time as a producer. It has performed well, making over $120 million in the box offices globally, receiving a 7.4 out of 10 on IMDb, 80% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes and 86% audience score. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Mate Night Podcast, where we are ranking every film ever made. Hi Dave. Today we are diving into this latest film in the Alien franchise, giving you a non-spoiler review for the first 15 minutes, then we'll delve into spoilers with a totally objective critical score section. We'll finally wrap up today's episode with a short segment each built around this film. We've got a jam-packed episode today, so strap in, strap on, and let's kick things off with our initial reactions. This is the most subjective score possible, trying to bottle simply how much we enjoyed this movie. On the count of three, Fred, I'm going to give you my score, and then you're going to follow immediately after me. Does that okay. sound right? Shall I three, two, one, you then? Yeah, go on then. Go on then. All right, you ready? Alien Romulus. I don't have any tagline. Three, two, one. 7.7. 7. 8.4. Oh, wow. I, okay, I liked it a lot, man. Talk to me. 8.4. Right. What does that mean? So, um, little bit of foreplay for our audience here. 6.5 for me is my differentiator between net good, net bad. Uh, gut reaction here. How much did we enjoy a film? Eight is great. Definitively, eight is great. And this was a great experience for me. I had a really, really good time. Uh, several reasons. Um, atmospherically, I felt like all of the tension that they were trying to achieve, I was bought into. So this film is more uh, geared um, or kind of more systematic of the first film rather than some of the other ones, which go along the, the more action-heavy formula, whereas this really plays on like the, the horror of the alien as an entity and also the actual genre that you, that you find yourself in. So I really liked it. I thought the tenseness was well realized in a lot of cases. The horror elements were pretty well achieved as well. Um, although I didn't find it scary, scary, I was brought into some of the jumps and there are some jumps in this. Um, and my Mrs. Rachel, who watched it, did find it very scary. So nice. I think, you know, maybe if you're going in for a bit of a scary time, you might you might find yourself effectively scared. Um, I thought the cinematic throwback of it, I, I liked. I liked that particularly some of the shots, like the whole opening sequence, it really feels like... 2001 A Space Odyssey, like the first Alien, like the silence of space, the way they've shot it, they've made it look like it's an older film than it was. And immediately when I'm sat in the, the movie theatre watching this, I felt, ah, oh, this is great. I love this. I love watching yep. this. Um, so the throwback, the nostalgia, just generally, obviously nostalgia can be hard to do right. And this does take a lot of cues from other films before it. Um, but because it was just my enjoyment of the film that I'm ranking this on, I didn't really care. Like, objectively and critically, it's not breaking any new ground. However, I didn't, I, I just liked it. I had a great time. I had a really great time, actually. Everything that they were trying to make their audience do, I, I felt. Everything yeah. they were trying to make the audience feel, I felt. I really thought the plot was well done and well crafted. Some of the minor elements were a bit tedious or, or, or felt like they were treading some of the ground of, of other films. But still, without going into spoilers, I was bought in. I came out was not only pleasantly surprised, but thought that really was a great experience. It was a good film. It was enjoyable, wasn't it? What about you? Yeah, I mean, 7.7 7 is good. Like, I, mm. I was kind of getting close to the greats. So if anything, maybe I could have gone a little bit higher. I've, I've got a little bit of context just so that anyone who's listening might mm. kind of, just so they know exactly what's going on. So there's the sure. seven Alien films. Alien 1979 was the first one. Uh, that would be the third in chronological order. So there were two before that one. And Alien Romulus follows immediately. So that's the fourth out of the seven. Humanity's struggling to live elsewhere in the universe and Earth. They're on this kind of, our protagonists are on this kind of mining uh, a planet that's kind of very dystopic. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of mining related deaths and environment related <laughs> yeah. deaths. It's a horrible place, right? And our protagonists, they really want to get out of there. Now, the people who are of concern are Rain, who is the kind of the main character. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's obviously kind of the mirror for the, for the original. Yeah. Um, 
Pay, played by Kaylee Spaney. Uh, she's an orphan girl in her 20s, I guess. And she's accompanied by a one of these synthetics, who just like a robot, like um, science from uh, the original one. Mm-hmm. Um, that robot's called Ash. He's the other character we need to worry about, played by David Johnson. Uh, he's another, he's a robot. He's a bit pathetic at the beginning. Uh Makes a lot of weird jokes. He's kind of there's a lot. They they, they do a bit of subtext where they uh, they sort of say she's orphaned, and the way we can tell is because Ash has been programmed by uh, Rain's late father to kind of look after her. And one mm. of the ways that they show and don't tell that is by making him tell these very bad dad jokes, mm. and then they just tell us anyway in case we missed it. Yeah. Um, but the two of them, they care for each other very deeply. And then basically, aside from those two, there's just everybody else, which is their kind of ragtag crew of people who, I'll be brutally honest, didn't really matter individually that much to, yeah. the, to the film. You, you got the angry one. You got, the, right. they you got the, the, the technically proficient one. You got the heartthrob. You know, it's a crew. It's, it's this, a crew. This film... It's not it's a crew assembles, but it's, it's, it's a heist movie, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the. it's, I feel like one of the things that held it back a little bit for me was I was comparing it a lot and you'll see this throughout this episode, comparing it a to lot Alien. to Alien 1979 mm-hmm. and it's not the crew from Alien 1979. It's just not, it's okay. not even close. Anyway, they, they, they're looking for a way out of this planet. Uh, they spot an abandoned ship just in reach in nearby space and they're they're confident it'll have the materials that they need to get back to what presumably is an earth and a paradise Mm. somewhere that's not this dystopia um they get to the ship they realize it's not a ship it's more of an outpost uh something is amiss about it it does have their resources but uh we are now fighting aliens Mm. and that is that is the film that is where we are at so I really, really liked it. Um, I want to start with the bad things because it usually helps to finish on the thing that I feel more passionately about. So here are kind of the things which I felt held it back from being better for me. It wasn't as scary as the original Alien. I I think that part of that is because I think that one is scarier than many. Okay? I don't want to Mm. give too much away, but there's... There was something about that original one where it was this singular terrifying entity that's kind of skulking around in the, and it didn't, it lost that for me in this one, which is Mm. fine. It was still scary, but it wasn't, it wasn't nearly as scary for me, I don't think, but that was fine. There were a few plot devices, uh, which were purposefully there to up the stakes and they weren't totally convincing for me, um, Again, I don't want to go and ruin anything, but it's, you know, it's the sort of things where there's there's in, there's disaster coming our way. We're on a we're on a collision course, these sorts of things. And okay, they just felt yeah. they felt a bit convenient, you know, in terms of the writing, but yeah, it's enough. fine. Uh the chemistry between Rain, uh, who's the main character, and the side character who is kind of a very half assed love interest. I was a bit like, either do it or don't it. Don't kind of sit in between. Got you. Um and just kind of broadly, the characters were just not that well set up for me. Sure. Um, I think that that stems a bit from the dialogue. There's this British guy who, you know, it's just so obvious that they're setting him up to be the guy that you don't like mm. for, for obvious reasons um, when you're watching it. And I, it just felt a bit spoon fed to me. The character setting up the dialogue, okay. particularly early on. Um in terms of the victims, it was kind of predictable for me who was going to die first. And I also yeah. knew from the trailer who was going to die as well. So there's two people in, in the crew of five that I already know, like a definitely No, I didn't die. watch the trailer. Okay. okay. Well, I'm starting to feel like maybe I should stop. I avoid them. Yeah. I avoid them because they, they give know. away so much these days. I know. I know. I should have done as well. Mm. I should have done as well. But whatever the case, I knew from, I knew from the poor dialogue who was going to die first. And I knew from the trailer who was going to die early on. Yeah. Um, I don't think that they have a great grasp of the size of space, but it's not that important. Um, what may say that? Sorry, oh, there, is this going to be hard to do without spoiling? Yeah, it? Yeah, okay, it's fair. it's to do with the it's to do with how quickly they get from A to B in terms of objectives and and potential disasters and things like everything okay. is just very very close together. Sure. And part of the thing that I think made Alien so amazing for me was that he spends the first 45 minutes doing nothing but setting up just how how much of a void we are in, mm. how alone we are. And uh, in this, 
everything is one cut away. You know what I mean? Nothing is, everything's just round the corner. And I felt like something was special about that in Alien that it didn't have in this. Um, There was a bit of uh, a, a small amount of luck, which kept the plot on the rails. That's fine. Mm. Uh, there was a little bit of, this is going to be a tricky one without spoiling anything, so I'm going to be very, very delicate. But there was a bit of inconsistency in the strength of one of the characters, uh, which I'll go into more in spoilers later, but it just fell a little off. Uh, last two, the perfect organism, the xenomorph. Um, not very good at hearing, I noticed. They, mm. You can make quite a racket on these things and they yeah. don't seem to hear it. Whatever, fine. Um, and obviously, the, the very obvious one, Generally, visually very good, but they brought somebody, they, they did a face with CGI and it mm. was not good. It wasn't mm. good at all. In fact, it was incredibly distracting. Really, for me, a lot of those are very trivial. The main thing for me was the dialogue and the character setup, okay. was, uh, especially the non main characters, was kind of lacking. Those are really like that. That's just everything that I could come up with. Okay. Um, I've got a much shorter sort of list of good things, but these really did matter. Um, the conclusion. I loved it. I loved the way it ended. It really mm -hmm. kept me on my toes. I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting it to do what it did. Um, I was scared. I was excited. I was happy. It was a really good ending. And that's so important to me. Um, aside from the CGI mock up, it was a very visually beautiful movie. Uh, the set design was obviously cool. And that's important when you're watching a sci fi. Um, Broadly, it was just either stunning exploration of space or disgusting guts and gore, and I loved that. The practical effects looked mm -hmm. fantastic. The disgusting, goopy stuff is just exactly what you want from an Alien movie. Um, the character development, specifically of Andy, was just so cool. Like, I loved mm -hmm. that whole that Yeah, whole his whole arc yeah. was great. Uh, the jump scares, you mentioned them. Oh, they really were brilliant. Really I felt well like done. such a wimp when I like leapt out of my seat mm. a couple of times. That was so cool. Um, and the the references to the original, you mentioned, I really liked it. I feel like mm -hmm. they could have really done a terrible job of that. And I, I really quite enjoyed it. I didn't mind it at all. I thought it was fine. So um, it was just a very, very fun. It was mm. well-crafted. It was very fun, kind of scary, exciting story with a few little issues, but really predominantly it was in the side characters and the dialogue where that was kind of the thing that stopped it from being comfortably above an eight. It was really missing that. It was stood next to Alien. It was mm. stood like next to Ridley Scott's Alien from 1979, yeah, and okay. it just didn't look as good there. So... Yeah, I'd need to rewatch it. I am th look to be honest. Al almost all of your critiques, I agree with. I mean, the ones that I don't, they're not like major. Like for instance, the scale of space. There were points where I actually remember thinking, "Wow, they've done an amazing job of really demonstrating the scale." Oh, okay. So one of the opening shots, kind of like a big zoom out shot, which was. I was like, "Wow, they really did impress upon me the size of it," and I thought it was really well done. Mm -hmm. Um. In terms of like characters and dialogues, I didn't have as much of a gripe with that, really. And I wouldn't say, having not watched Alien as recently as you have, I didn't feel more, um, I didn't feel like I had a greater connection with the crew on that in Alien right. compared to this one. Like, I'm not saying that this crew was incredible and I really identified no. and connected with them all, but I really, outside of understanding that the crew within the first alien are iconic. <laughs> I, I didn't feel like, oh, these are great characters outside of Ripley, say. So other than that, though, yes, you are right. Almost on all points. Yeah. That's a very fair critiques. And I want to stress from the gut reaction standpoint, it becomes clear to me how, yeah, there's just a buff of enjoying things. You know, you're at the cinema and this was one which for sure I could see there are points of this film that make it not phenomenal. It's not a phenomenal film. It's probably not yeah. an 8.4 in terms of an objective ranking of a film. But I just really enjoyed myself. I really had a great time. I felt how they wanted me to feel in most senses. And, yeah. and importantly, was pleasantly surprised. You know, when you go into something... Yes. And it, you almost give it a buff just based on being surprised at how much you enjoyed it. I've definitely fallen victim to that in this case. It was, it was, it was, 
a very enjoyable movie to watch, a really enjoyable mm. movie to watch. And a lot of the problems which I raised are very trivial. Like they really don't matter a hell of a lot when you are jumping out of your seat or you mm. are, you know, you are genuinely scared of the of the, the outcomes. Yeah. Like I say, I mean, probably the one other one that I didn't sort of bring up again in the conclusion, which maybe uh, the for me... I like as watertight a plot as possible. Generally, I just noticed this seems to be an impossible request. Mm. But there were a couple of plot devices, which now we could go into spoilers, I might bring I, up. I think we've had a good um, a good bash at going non-spoiler. So maybe yeah, we'll okay, give it excellent. A well. So specifically, there was a scene where they have finally... God, guns are effective against these guys. Mm. I, I didn't really. I always thought these xenomorphs were so much scarier until I saw guns just te- like a single gun tear like twenty of them to pieces. Yeah, yeah, um, effective that. I loved the whole like. Okay, right. This gravity thing. Mm. It wasn't like a malfunction. No. It was like no, the ship is intentionally switching its gravity on and off. Yeah. What is that about? Fair enough. Yeah, the gravity device. I kind of forgot how much it was there just to be useful. It was so useful and yeah. so pointless. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That, so that was, that's kind of having one of said that, it did, yes, okay, it was pointless. Not pointless, it was a bit dumb. Very dumb. Very dumb. It did set up, <laughs> did set up maybe the best set piece, maybe, you know, top two or three set pieces within the whole film, which was the the acid in zero gravity. Do you want to explain scene. it in case you haven't seen it? Yeah, so Jamie's referring to this um, anti-gravity function that the ship has where occasionally the gravity will just turn off and so they are effectively all floating in space. Once every few hours. Once every few hours. A and then it will... Or something. Yeah, for, for a, an arbitrary amount of time, however long the plot <laughs> However needs. long it needs it to be off. And for. so then some... The ship will... T- correct itself and turn the gravity back on <laughs> as, it, as it would do. <laughs> right, this abandoned thing in space. So they the characters become familiar with this. It happens a few times. Um, and then when we're all in climactic action, we've got many xenomorphs involved against our protagonists. We have a set piece where they're effectively cornered, running low on bullets. And the main character, Rain decides that instead because she's worried about the acid blood when she fires these these shots just going and absolutely wrecking causing havoc in the ship which is a big issue throughout the whole film they're worried about acid blood burning through the whole this this acid blood seems a lot yes. more potent than it was in the first film because they did have an an instance where it didn't go all the way through in the first film but in this kind but it was only a tiny 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 bit whereas whereas okay in this case it's like this is going to completely she's just torn 20 of them to shreds yeah so anyway she yeah she's face to face with all of these and as jamie was saying the gun's very effective great one single gun she decides to use the anti-gravity function did she turn it on or did she just i think she did i think she did she remembered they were they were they were cornered Andy he told said a, a joke, joke at- which was to do with gravity, and she remembered, and she turned it off. But again, it's only on a timer or something. Yeah. Remember that? Anyway, whatever. The whole set piece itself is basically her shooting all these aliens. She can now, they're attacking her, and now she's able to kill them because the gravity because is Because the gravity off. is off, the acid is just going to float in space. So she kills them all. Thank God for that. Thank yeah. God. We can Because if we didn't have the gravity off right now we would be we would be brown bread you know what i think you know why i like it <laughs> here's why i like okay, it. okay here's okay. why i like the anti-gravity yeah yeah because sorry how do you pronounce his name is it fede, fede the director? oh fede alvarez fede. Oh, God, so whether it was fede or ridley i know ridley uh was a producer on this or, or the, one of the writers whoever it was yes probably thought okay we are in a situation where we want them to be cornered. Yes. And we want there to be loads of xenomorphs, and we're only down to the last couple. We're only down to Andy and Rain. Now, how do we get out of this? Oh, if only I could think of a way to get out of this. Well, in space, there's no gravity. Right. So why don't we create a device that randomly turns the gravity <laughs> off? Could we do that? <laughs> no one will notice that, will We've got to give it a catch. All right, just... Uh, just, just- 
Make it so the ship turns it on yeah. and off every now and <laughs> the then. The ship decides to just whack it in there every now and again. Yeah. <laughs> just so we can mention it early on in the film so it's not a so, random So out. similarly to how when we discussed um, M. Night Shyamalan putting his daughter in his own film, but he put up all the money for it so we don't really mind. I quite like this ballsy <laughs> move of being like, the guy's obviously had an idea and just yeah. putting the stupidest device Look, possible it, to achieve it's it. It's fine. It's, it's, uh, it's one of like two or three where I was like, these are kind of convenient plot things. There was another minor hole, plot hole afterwards, hole being quite fitting because mm. the gravity turns back on. It blows a hole in the hull of the, the, the area that they are in. There's no air locking. Mm. The gust of wind manages to remove a load of xenomorphs or something, oh, for yeah, us, which yeah. is great. But somehow they don't just suffocate, which I couldn't figure out at the time. Which one was it? Was this near the end when they're in the shaft? Just at, they have literally, so, they, so they've turned off the gravity. They floated through. They've, they've shot them all. They floated through yeah, the floating acid, float through which was acids. cool. They've gone into the lift shaft to get to their escape shuttle. There's no, air, it's just a wire fence between them and the lift shaft. They start moving up the lift Mm. shaft and then the gravity turns back on oh shit because she's floating so she's going to plummet to her death and Mm -hmm. then all this acid goes to the floor which was always their worry and then it blows a hole in the ship and it depressurizes and loads of xenomorphs just get really badly impacted from it apart from our protagonist they're fine right And also now we can still breathe somehow in space. Yeah, yeah, because the because the elevator sh- the elevator flew down the shaft and blocked the hole. Yeah. Oh, here's here, my point about power inconsistency, right? Ash. Okay. Right. The guy takes like a gentle knock to the head and he's on the floor for twenty minutes, but he can catch like what must be about a two thousand kilogram lift with one hand yeah. and just hold it up. So what is the reason behind him? Is it? getting hit because i thought at first he was autistic i didn't realize he was synth i thought oh they're doing a really good job of dem uh of um not demonstrating but like showcasing what it's like inside the mind of someone with autism you yeah know, at okay. first because he's obviously a bit um neurodivergent yes and then he's getting picked on when rain is off to try and get them off the planet yeah he's getting picked on and it, sh- it shows kind of like a cacophony going on in his head you try yes. very difficult to drown out the noise and I, and then it turns out actually he's synthetic and he's been a cool reveal i like yeah, that I, I like the reveal that he was synthetic um but this then comes up as a, a device they use a, a couple of times where he will basically just get triggered by something or he'll get a slight hit to the head and then suddenly he'll be cowering in a corner. He'll be comatosed on the floor. He won't be able to move. Do you remember, did this happen to, so Rook, who was brought back, Ian Holmes' character, he, is is this an issue with synthetics generally or is it just his character? I I was trying to remember if Rook Uh, The only thing that I might say on that, and okay, let me just caveat this to anybody listening. I have only watched Alien, okay? Mm. So I do not know, but- in Alien, uh, I, I don't know if his name is Rook, but Science, when he has the fight with Ripley, is it Ripley? It's Ripley, isn't it? Mm. She, somebody hits him on the head and then he starts to go full, sort of like he just, he very obviously is a synthetic at that point. Yeah. He's not hes not behaving like a human who might have been hit on the head. He's just completely mm. malfunction, short-circuiting. That's the only other time that we've seen it. So I suppose... That's fine. It was more just the fact that, like, there were a couple of moments where he'd, like, catch a lift with one hand. Mm. And I'd just be like, how can this same guy be... He almost was, like, way physically stronger when he had... Because he got this chip in his head, which made him smarter, which was fucking awesome. I loved the whole ashing. I loved it, but I wasn't ever really sure how strong he was, even at the end of the movie. Because there were just some moments where he was completely pathetic and some moments where he was incredibly strong and it just kind of wasn't really clear on it. Was his name Ash? I thought it was Andy. Was it Andy? Oh, it might have been Andy. Let me have a look. Hang on. No, I've got it here. Andy. It is Andy. Apologies, everybody. Andy, I've been... I got... I was so swept up in the details. So have you got anything else to add before we... we just because we're, we're on we're 25 through, minutes. We? Yeah, so... Um, CGI and practical effects. Yeah, I generally liked the effects, but as you say, there was that CGI section, or basically when they brought back uh, Rook's character, it was a bit... 
it was awful. It yeah, was it was very a bit all over the place. I, I got round it. Initially, I was like, that's shockingly bad. It's mm. almost purposefully bad. Yes. And then I was like, in my head, I managed to accept it quite quickly because I was like, oh, he's kind of half alive after he's, he's supposed sure. to look really artificial. So the uncanny valleyness of it didn't actually jar me as much as I've heard other, I've looked at other reviewers who've, who've said that it was it's shocking terrible. and same with you. Um, so uh, the face hugger layer scene. So these are on the oh, negatives. the face huggers. We haven't mentioned them yet. Yeah. So generally I really enjoyed the face hugger scene. One of the great um, shocks or one of the great jump scares was when they'd, have, they'd managed to get past them all initially. And then Navarro's character, the woman who first dies, um, ends up like out of nowhere just getting attacked right they, they basically felt like they'd got through all of the, yeah. the face huggers one had managed to just sneak through the gap you finally yes. felt that they were safe and then just bang out of nowhere oh. i thought that was a great they sequence are all, as well like face huggers just as a just dan o'banner like just the the face hugger mm. oh my god it's it's what you go to alien for they are I prefer them to the Xenomorph. They're so much more disturbing to me. Yeah. The Xenomorph just, oh, is just yeah, like a bit a of violation, a, Yeah, it? it's so mm. horrible. And talking of violations, like the whole ending baby Xenomorph hybrid was... I <laughs> loved that. I liked it I, as well. I was like, I could not fucking believe what was going so on. I think they had... So that was something that was almost inspired by Alien 3 as well. I think there's a dream sequence, if I remember. It's been a, a while since I've... I thought it could. I did. I did want to. I yeah. don't think they've full on done something like that, mm. but they've had like a dream sequence where Ripley was birthed an alien. Someone yeah. will correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, I I really liked that. It actually reminded me of Smile. Recently, had the horror film Smile had a very similar body horror like gargantuan creature. Oh gosh, Smile one shook me up. Um, but the face hugger lair scene where they're tr- where like oh no they've got they can't they they go by body heat. And sound. Mm-hmm. It seems like we've done that sort of thing before where they can't see, you know, yeah. you see sequences like that. And then, especially as you mentioned, when um, the uh, Tyler, he ends up taking the call from his uh, sister Kay. And you're like, what's going what's on? Going like, on? Like, yeah. And then ridiculous. he can just have a full on conversation and whisper. Yep, that was a bit stupid. Uh, the length of the film, I did feel it probably didn't need that many endings even okay. though i really liked the last ending maybe they, they it felt like they resolved it and then they just brought another well i've got a cool end. story for you there you mentioned yep. ridley scott's involvement i saw a video of him explaining fede alvarez had shown him the first mm. draft showed it to the ridley scott the guy who made alien the yeah. one and only and uh ridley scott goes okay i'm, I'm not actually going to tell you what my feedback is i'm going to mm-hmm. i'm going to write it down and then I'm going to give that to you and you can take it away. So he writes it down. He gives it to him, to Fede Alvarez. Fede Alvarez goes into another room and he hears him kick a wardrobe, smash something, come back out and go, thanks for that. They're really good. And then walks off and makes every single one of the changes. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and, and the, the interviewer said, can you tell me what the kind of feedback was? And he said, I'm not going to give you any details. But he said, usually directors make movies too long and it, uh, you don't want to lose the dynamic element of your movie. And so that was effectively what I was doing was I was trying to tell him where to cut back. And mm. so that's 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 uh, uh, to give everyone an idea of Ridley Scott's involvement in this. Yeah. He was very top level. This was very much Fede Alvarez's movie. Mm. Uh, and Ridley Scott seems to, presumably he'll have been involved in some technical elements. He'll probably been involved early on but Mm. it sounds a lot like until that day there was a lot that he just hadn't been involved in until that moment so that's really interesting i i I think that interestingly enough i'd have been well i'd be interested to see how long it would have been yeah (laughs) if he cut it down because i really liked the whole end sequence i thought it it was really cool but maybe it felt like we'd come straight off of a climax off of a high then into another. But it does that in Alien 1979. I know, but I don't think I really enjoyed that, that much in Alien yeah, 1979. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a way to be a bit more consistent with it. So uh, minor gripes. I'll be honest, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed this one. Like yes. really enjoyed it. Uh, there were there were issues with it, but I don't. I didn't really care. Well, I tell you what. In it on the topic of creators making their stuff too long. 
Mm. We were supposed to stop this at 20, uh, 15 minutes and we're at 30. Let's so we're going to have to through. rattle through our critical score section. So um, for those listening, this is really, our enjoyment section was really about, uh, those gut reaction scores was really about just how enjoyable was this movie. But mm. we are now going to rate it in a bunch of categories where we're trying to figure out how good the movie was in these different areas. Um, we're going to start off with plot. We're going to do our absolute best to just absolutely rattle through these. Um, personally, I thought the the plot had a really, really good driving force. Generally, I really mm-hmm. like the whole escaping from, you know, these monsters. It just, it was exciting. It was fun. The plot holes were fine. They mm-hmm. weren't that bad. Like, you know, I, I've i seen worse very yeah. recently. Um, I would be happy with an eight or nine. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so the, I I don't think I could give it a nine because as yeah, you say, it was a fair. there was a lot wrong with it. Um, yeah, okay, fair enough. Eight. Yeah. So was it great? Now there were great elements for sure, and like particularly all of Andy's Andy's whole arc was amazing. But that's we probably put that under character. Yeah, but I mean, how this? No, I more meant the story of it. So okay how they used him to drive things on. Okay. So yeah. by making him, him, a, he was very important. It's tied so. to the character. I do get as well. Um, okay. I think we go with a, go on, give it an eight. Uh, to give you uh, an idea, the other eights we've got are the sound of music, Jaws, the thing, gladiator, old boy, and Doom part two. The sevens we've got are alien, uh, 500 days of summer and challenges. Uh, maybe seven. I, do you know what? Yeah, I agree. Maybe okay, cool. Seven. Character. Um, I'm going to go out here and just say like there was Andy who was really cool and interesting. Mm-hmm. Rain was absolutely fine. And I Light did rain. not give a shit about anybody else. Fair enough. The xenomorph. <laughs> yeah. Right. I he's mean, good. Like, he's fine. But <laughs> even then character? there's just so many of them that I kind of don't really. Yeah. Okay. So what we thinking, Andy's <sighs> definitely a eight, maybe Let's say eight character at least. Yep. But other than that, like Rain's cool, but not not an eight. If six point five, which we can't give, is bang in the middle, I would say seven. Uh, for for all the characters yeah, in Alien seven, Romulus. Do it. Yeah? All right. Seven so. it. Dialogue. Okay. Go on. What are you thinking? Um I didn't like so they had obviously a lot of tie-ins to the last ones. Now there was one specific quote, um, Get away from her, you bitch, which was, is from Aliens. Yes. The most famous line in Aliens. Um, and the delivery on it, it's not just the delivery, but oh, maybe I'll go into dialogue here. I, I don't know. The dialogue wasn't that great, was it? I you didn't, didn't think like so. it. I, well, what made it bad for you? It felt, um, it, it tied quite closely into character where I felt like the dialogue was spoon feeding me how I should feel about these characters. That mm. was really what bothered me about it. I don't, I don't generally mind a bit of sure. exposition, but what I do mind is the British guy being mm, yeah. a complete and utter asshole for, like, for the whole thing so that we know for a fact this is the guy that we shouldn't like. I immediately and, thought of him when you said... Yeah, yeah it's yeah. stuff like... He was the worst, but generally I just... I mean, yeah, okay. No, he was really the problem. If you took him out, I guess the, the dialogue wasn't that bad. It really was him that was pissing me off a lot. Mm. But I didn't think that the dialogue was especially good in this movie. No. But aside from him, it also wasn't atrocious. I, I'd probably go with a six for me. Six. Sick. Uh, performance. I'm going to let you lead this one. So uh, my favorite performance is Rain, who is Kaylee Spaney. She was good. I think the best character is Andy by an absolute mile. Uh, all the others do well with what they're given. I mean, dialogue wise, as you say, it's kind of hit your mark here. <laughs> if we need you to drive the plot forward, particularly Ty- some of Tyler's and Kay's lines. So the, the siblings, like you mentioned how it seemed their whole romance, Kay's and Reigns was kind of out of nowhere. And I felt like the dialogue for the expositional side of us understanding their romance was basically Kay being like, 
oh, he, he needs you here. And you right. know, they didn't really explain anything, but they just alluded to some it romance. It was very half asked that. So for what, for what they had, I thought they were all passable. Yeah. Uh, I actually thought that um, Spike Fern, so the guy, the English guy, the yes. angry English guy, did a good job considering how annoying his dialogue is. I think that the problem was really the character, the not, character. not the performance. So I thought he did all right, even though the character, as you say, was, yeah. Um, David Johnson, so Andy, that is by far the best character on the page. Like that's everyone's dream would be, I'd love to be able to play that character. Yes. And he's fine as well. I feel like that would have been a reasonably easy role to play. Personally. I thought that this is like, you'd love to play that. Yeah. Like you get to basically be two characters. He did do he a did, good he did good. Yeah, he didn't do badly. But I remember yeah. Rachel coming out and saying, wow, he was the best. I personally felt like Kaylee Spain did a great job. Uh, but across the board, it was more just, they did fine. And I would say probably a seven. I, I was sure you were going to go with seven. Cool. Okay. And I'm very happy with that. Visuals. Yeah, I really liked it. I really liked the visuals. I really liked it a lot. I actually... And I think included into that is the building of tension through, you know, the jump scares and, and the yes, ability. Okay. So the visuals and the sound obviously play a big part in, in horrific moments. Yeah. Uh, special effects, the only bad one, but it was a real stinker. Was, it was just like a blue, there was a blunder. Yeah, it was almost like just the one black spot outside of that. The practical effects for the Xenomorphs were, were quality. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really felt like the practical effects of the baby Xenomorph were quite harrowing. Yes. Did a great job at that. Some of the set, some of the scenes, the disturbing scenes, like the birth, were just so visceral. Oh, that was just awful. And then aside from that anyway, like the sca- the shots, the opening shot, the opening sequence in space, the silence of it, I remember being like this. I was immediately like, I like this. I That's really what this. Alien is for. Man. Yeah. So I am in the eight or eight or even nine realm. Yeah. I'm I'm the same as you. Yeah. I uh, should we I tell you what, since we're stuck between the two, should we have a quick look at what comes into those? Yeah, two? give me some uh Okay, so we have uh quite a few nines. Uh, we have quite a few nines and quite a few eights. So I'm going to go with the nines. Uh, Psycho Apocalypse Now, The Sound of Music, Jaws, The Thing, Alien, Team America, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, I think it could fit with them. Uh, eight, visually, uh, Godfather, Gladiator, Old Boy, 500 Days of Summer, Crouching Tiger, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, uh, Casino, and Heat. I think you. I think it, a, it fits better with that nine category. Than the, the only issue thing. is, is like it's got that one absolute stinker, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, like you, you made an interesting point, which is like there, there kind of could be a bit of a benefit of the doubt thing, mm. where it was, it the whole character, the whole thing, the the character itself, and then the the character within the plot, everything around it was supposed to be unsettling. Mm. Um, and so you could maybe give a benefit of the doubt for that. I don't know. Mm. But yeah, I suppose if you're going to give something a nine out of 10, they really can't be making any serious blunders. Yeah, I would say eight. Okay, cool. Uh, sound. Sound. Good. I can't remember it personally, but not in a bad way. I'm not great at noticing sound. I usually let you lead this. No, I, I think, again, building tension, they did a great job and, and jump scares are as much about the sound, if not more. I agree with more. that, yeah. There was some, there were certain moments where I felt they did so well at making you on the edge of your seat think something was going to happen and not. I'm specifically speaking about when Kay fell off the ship, the pregnant woman, when she mm-hmm. fell off the ship after the xenomorph that, yeah. that actually birthed out of um, Navarro uh, and then killed the angry Brit. Yes. And she was on the run. She fell out of the ship. And then she basically got up and was like, I need to get out of this room. And you have just were certain. They, they, they just played with you thinking yeah. they were going to jump scare, And they didn't really kind of half delivered yeah. one right at the end. Uh, I thought it was great. Again, kind of mixing in all of the elements of the, the experience there. But well, you say I'd you give... thought it was great. You know what that means. <laughs> Should we do an eight is great. I, you know what? I think so. I think so. You know what? We gave a good score for um, 2001 for the silence as well. Like the Ooh, use of silence was good. That was very it. sophisticated of us, that. 
Was mm. that that sounds a lot like something you'd say, not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're moving on to impact. Um, I did have. It's got uh, 7.4 IMDb, 80% critic score, 86% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, $120 million. It's part of the Alien franchise. It sounds like an 8 or 9 to me. What what do you think? Oh, I wouldn't say that. For me, an impact, right, an 8 or a 9. For, uh, a 10 is like once every few years. Okay. Like, gr- yeah. like this changes. I like this, yeah, okay. 9 and 8, you're talking the the um most impactful films of the year i don't think alien comes into it and the fact that it's a legacy sequel it's done all right at the box office but it's not done i I was more thinking kind of six or seven sort of okay Uh, i'm gonna campaign for seven because I, i do think that it seems it seems to have done very, very well with audiences, critics. Everybody seems very, very happy with this mm. movie. Yeah. And uh, well, I guess this is an interesting question about our impact segment is we are, does it actually get a buff for being part of an important franchise? Because it is part of an, it, like the alien franchise has impact. And so if it's part of that franchise, then presumably that would mean it has a greater impact than say something that is not part of an important franchise. So, so here is my counter to that: that true originality has a greater impact. So, okay, because it's the because it can draw from which an established a name, lot. and it did it like re- it was in many ways very unoriginal. Personally, a a kind of groundbreaking film, let's say, on the extreme end. Mm-hmm. I can't see that being a sequel. Is it or a, a sequel would just be so rare for that to happen? Um, okay. Whereas, yes, yeah, I, I do get what you mean. Like it, it's established because it comes from Alien, but also when you're talking about there've been nine Alien films, like yeah. does it lose a bit of that weight <laughs> of an impact? Okay, okay. So what are you thinking? Six. Uh, we can go seven. Okay, because cool. of uh, as you say, it's it's done well. Like. Yeah, and and I tell you what, I I, I scripted this earlier on uh, for my segment coming up, but we have seen how high and how low alien movies can go. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there have been, like, as far as I'm aware, I I wish I could say I've watched them all, but my understanding is there are some real stinkers out Mm. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the May Night Podcast has now rated Alien Romulus. Uh, out of 10 in nine different categories, we've tried to take into account everything, how good it is, how enjoyable it is, how good it is in very different areas. Uh, we've averaged it out. We're holding it against everything else. Um, and here are the results. Alien Romulus, 2024, scored an 8.4 out of 10 for Fred's enjoyment, a 7.7 out of 10 for Jambo's enjoyment. Then it got... In the critical score section of how good it was, a seven for plot, a seven for character, a six for dialogue, a seven for performance, an eight for visuals, an eight for sound, a seven for impact, giving it 7.34 out of 10, making it the 26th greatest film of all time. Uh, But for a bit of reference, it's kind of putting it uh, 25% from the bottom of our very epic list. We are going through some real belter classics. Whereabouts is Alien? Uh, okay, yeah, good one. So Alien Romulus is 26th and Alien is 22nd. Nice. I'm glad it got higher. 7.59. I, I Alien. gave a higher gut reaction for Romulus and uh, Alien is... Deserves to deserves be higher. Deserves to be higher. For it sure. does. But I liked Romulus. Listen, if you guys made it this far through the video, thank you so much for listening. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. We've got other videos on Alien Romulus, Gladiator. Uh, just check them out. Thanks so much, guys. See you on the next one. Have a good one.